Hey, welcome. Welcome to the On Fryer Show. You know, I do the little hand thing. Uh, we have a great show for you today. This is the On Fryer Show, and I'm your host, Daryl McKell Brooks. So you have to just fix the camera. I'd like to thank you all for watching. The past shows I've had is a great audience, and people have been liking one of the topics that we've been talking about. Today, I'm going to have a very special guest from the NRA, New Jersey. It's, hey, how you doing, David? Um... Mark Cheeseman, he is a part of the NRA. He is an awesome guy. He's going to be talking about a lot of different things. We're talking about the Second Amendment, the Constitution, the right to bear arms, and we're talking about some of the things that he's working with in New Jersey. Uh, you know, it's a lot of different things that you need to know, and that's what we're talking about. So we're waiting, waiting for Mark Cheeseman. He's an awesome guy. He's like that kind of guy, that Terminator guy. The guy you don't want to mess with. Yeah, Mark Cheeseman, I've seen him speak at the uh, NRA rallies and Second Amendment rallies, and he's an awesome speaker, and he knows his stuff, and he's fighting for the rights of the people and the people of the Constitution. How y'all doing today? I thank you all for watching and supporting the show. This is, the, I want to, hey, how you doing? I want this to be the best top conservative talk show in the state of New Jersey and around the country. With you help, with y'all help, I can be that show. This is about you and your issues and your rights. And people need to know what's happening because this is the true show, the On Fire talk show. Yes, and I'm your host, Daryl McKell Brooks, and uh, I'm waiting for Mark Cheeseman to uh, log on. Hey, Mark, are you there? You know, I got my cup of coffee. You know, people are like, well, why are you drinking coffee? Because it keeps me up. You know, I'm an old guy. Mm. Coffee time, yeah. And I have my water. So it's, uh, it's going to be an awesome show. Uh, and um, I'm waiting for Mark Cheeseman to come on. How y'all doing today? Everybody's doing great today. It's Wednesday, and it's exciting. And, uh, and, and uh, yes, it is a great show today, and, and, and it's exciting. It's raining here in the state of New Jersey, in, in Burlington, Trenton area. It's, it's, it's raining, but uh, we got an exciting show, uh, a show that will provide you with great information and a really a serious issues about guns. Yes, and the Second Amendment. So I'm waiting for Mark Cheeseman. Hey, Mark, are you there? I'm waiting for Mark, because we're gonna talk about uh, the Second Amendment rights, the Constitution, and a lot of serious issues that need to be discussed, things that you should know. Mark, figure it out, uh, figure out this camera. Hey, hey, Mark. Uh, uh, things going on. And so, I'm waiting for Mark. <laughs> hey, Mark, you working on that camera? We're waiting for you, Mark, to come on on. This is the On Fire Show with your host, Daryl McKell Brooks. I'm waiting for Mark Cheeseman. Uh, Mark, are you there? And he's figuring out the camera. Hey, uh, Mark, uh, landscape. Remember I told you? Figure it out. <laughs> and I'm ready to try to bring you on so you can talk about some serious issues, talk about the Second Amendment rights, talk about what's happening with the Constitution. Um... Yes, protects the first and the fourth. Yes, it does. How y'all doing? How you doing? This is Daryl McKell Brooks, the host with the most of uh, the On Fire Show. I'm waiting for Mark Cheeseman to come on. I think he hasn't some. He's having uh, uh, technical difficulties, uh, but you know some of us do. You know we're dealing with this technology, dealing with phones and iPhones and everything else. You know it's a lot of things that are happening. And John Robert Carlin is watching. Yes, hey John. Uh, the Constitutional Republicans, he's watching. Love you, man. You're the man. And this is the On Fire Show with your host, Daryl McKell Brooks. Uh, 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 Mark Cheeseman is a part of the uh, New Jersey NRA, and he is also a part of the uh, New Jersey Constitutional Republicans. And so uh, he is also a part of different organizations dealing with the Second Amendment, and he is talking about our rights as a people in New Jersey and across the country. So I think that it, it's, it's so important that you know your rights. And, um, you know, if you don't know your rights, then you're, you're a slave. And, uh, we're, we're, you know, we don't need slaves. We need people that know their rights. We need people that know the Constitution. We need people to know the Declaration of Independence. We need the people to know the politics of what's happening in your state and, 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 and around your country and what is being taught in your schools. Yes, and um, you, need to, you need to know all these different things because... Uh, you cannot be ignorant. We're in 2018. We can't be a people of ignorance because we have the technology. You can do research. You can find all the information out. And we're writing for Mark Cheeseman. Hey, Mark, are you there? 
Um, I usually do this rant after this, uh, I'll do the show, but I'm waiting for Mark. Uh, I don't want to say too much because I want Mark Cheeseman to come on. Hey, Mark, are you there? This is the On Friday show. Can't join. Uh, hold on. Uh, I'm going to send you a bring you on camera. I'm bringing you on camera, Mark. I uh, can't bring on camera. This is the On Friday show with your host, Daryl McKell Brooks. Um, there's some technical difficulties. Yes, yeah, censorship is a high level. There's some technical difficulties we're having. And, um, hey, Mark, are you there? Um, I sent you a uh, bring you on camera. I sent you an invite, Mark. Are you there? Come on on, my brother. Um, there you go. Hey, there we are. <laughs> All right, so, how you doing? How you doing, Mark? Uh, great, great. Thanks for having me. Good. Oh, awesome, everybody. This is Mark Cheeseman, uh, part of New Jersey. He's a New Jersey uh, resident. He's part of the NRA and different other groups, Second Amendment groups around the state, and also you're part of the Constitutional Republicans, right? That is correct. Yes. All right. So tell us, Mark. We're going right to the point. Tell us about yourself and about the organizations you work with. All right. Uh, well, I'm an NRA member, also a member of the ANJRCP Association of uh, Rifle Pistol Clubs in New Jersey. Um, I run a, two Facebook pages, pro Second Amendment Facebook pages also. Um, talk about self-governance and uh, taking control of the legislature, uh, basically fighting for the Second Amendment here in New Jersey. Okay. Also, presently, we're filed in the New Jersey Appeals Court uh, to bring back carry in New Jersey. Carry mm -hmm. in New Jersey. Mm -hmm. so, so tell us, you know, how did you get started with these organizations? Starting, you know, uh, you know how long have you been a part of uh, uh, To the best of my memory, probably about five years. How did I get started? All right. Well, I, I've been shooting basically rifles since I was about seven years old uh, with my father um, and we, we moved in to an area of Gloucester County and our neighborhood started to get kind of kind of bad so I said to my wife I said you know I think I'm gonna buy a, uh, a pistol so I can carry it and she was like ah you don't need that I don't think it's a good idea I said all right well whatever that's what I'm gonna do so I, I, I <laughs> Uh, for my permit to purchase, mm -hmm. I went to purchase a pistol, and I said, all right, well, now what do I need to do to carry this thing? So I went down to the local police and applied for a permit to carry. And I found something very interesting. Uh, I had to write a letter of need. Yes. Justifiable mm -hmm. need. And, you know, it, I'm racking my brain. And, oh, what is this? Well, I, I, I honestly, I didn't know what to write. Why do I need to have a need to protect myself outside the home? So I wrote a letter of need the best I could, and I waited about three months for the police department to approve my application. The chief of police did deny me on lack of need. And what happens at that point, you can appeal that to your municipal court, which I did. And that took another 45 days before I finally got into court. And the judge denied me again for lack of need. And I asked him, I said, can you define justifiable need for me? And he said, no, no not really. Wow. So you, need, you need a few things in New Jersey to be able to carry a firearm uh, under justifiable need statute. Okay? You need to have... It's actually, it's in three parts. You need justifiable need, urgent necessity, specific threats, and a special danger. And you need to have all of these, a combination of all of these things. Mm -hmm. If you only have one, that disqualifies you. Actually, if you have all three, that disqualifies you. Okay. So... That set me off quite a bit. I, I wasn't too thrilled with the decision, and I, you know, I said, uh, we need to do something about this. I mean, I have friends over in Pennsylvania that can carry. I got a good buddy down who had no problem getting one. Um, and that's basically how I got started. I'm, I'm pretty much just a pissed off guy that couldn't carry his gun. That's it. Wow. So, 
So how did that all get started? Um, uh, the right to uh, to carry a gun and the need, and 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 so how did it? Because has has New Jersey always been a uh, a state which you couldn't carry a gun? How did that get started? When did uh, that happen? No, New Jersey has not always been this way, and actually, it's the foundation of our case. Mm -hmm. uh, in and around 1966, Attorney General Sills, who was under Governor Hughes, uh, had, had a problem with illegal handguns coming into New Jersey. So Attorney General Sills' job was to come up with a permitting procedure or a permitting uh, scheme, which is basically what we have today. Mm -hmm. And Attorney General Sills specifically said... Uh, in the A-165 debate, which are the legislative debates about the permitting procedures back then. And, and we got to go back to 1966. All she wanted to do was separate the fit from unfit, the criminal from non-criminal. So in 1966, you didn't need to have urgent necessity or specific threats. Yeah. You did have to have a justifiable need. The justifiable need was as simple as lawful purpose and self-protection, which ironically we see this come up 42 years later in the Heller decision. Mm -hmm. But New Jersey has ignored the Heller decision with the justifiable need statute. They don't understand. The Heller decision actually reaffirmed the Second Amendment for everybody. Yes. But New Jersey ignores that. Mm -hmm. So, you have another case that comes up, the Sicardi case, where Sicardi was denied a carry permit. Okay. And he was denied because he didn't have urgent necessity and specific threats. And this came from a uh, actually a state police sergeant. Mm -hmm. So, the Sicardi ruling was kind of formed illegally and adopted illegally and it went through the permitting scheme that we have today and it was written into the code, the Justifiable Needs Statute, which a lot of judges call the Sicardi Rule. Sicardi Rule. So the Sicardi Rule is what we are fighting. If we get the Sicardi Rule thrown out, okay, we will succeed in bringing carry back to New Jersey because essentially if we get the security rule thrown out where one has to show specific threats, urgent necessity, and God knows what else, then you will be able to get a carry permit under a simple lawful purpose and self-protection. Mm -hmm. So in 1966 and prior, you could get a carry permit in New Jersey for something just as, just as simple as lawful purpose and self-protection. Okay. Wow. Now bear in mind, though, and when we talk about this, you still need to understand, though, that we're not taking the safety net out of anything here, all right? You're still going to have to have a firearms ID card. You're still mm -hmm. going to have to go through the permitting process. You're going to have to have your fingerprints done. You're going to have to have three references. You're still going to have to prove accuracy and safety with a handgun. So by the time you get done with all this, you have an overabundance of proof that you are, A, a law-abiding citizen. You, you can handle a handgun safely and accurately. And yes. accurately. Uh, we're not trying to take that away. Mm -hmm. And in 1966, you had to do the same thing. Mm -hmm. So they, they didn't hand out carry permits easily back then, but you were able to get one back then. Mm -hmm. Now, I was... Okay. Twice. I applied in 2015 and then again in 2017. Okay, so so basically, uh, this is what your case is about, the carry case, right? Correct. Uh, our case is about getting carry back in New Jersey. Okay, and so how's that been going so far? I mean, are we getting a lot of support from around the state and around the country? I'm sure you're getting a lot of support from well, gun owners, right? Yeah, and I and I have to say, give everybody a heartfelt thanks. Yeah, we are getting a lot of support, a lot of financial support, um, a lot of moral support. We have a lot of people behind us in the state of New Jersey. Um, I really haven't heard any negative thing from anybody at all. How about the politicians? Uh, what are the politicians talking about in the state of New Jersey? 
They're nowhere. They're nowhere. Why is that? Well, the New Jersey legislature has failed time and time again to do this. Mm -hmm. Whether they be Democrat or Republican, they failed. There are a number of very good bills in the New Jersey legislature. I mean, my God, you've got Michael Patrick Carroll's the Citizens Protection Act has been sitting there collecting dust since 2010. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a bill that needs to be heard. It should have been heard years ago when he first put it out. Anthony Bucco brought it back up, too. Parker Space, I think, is also a co-sponsor. The bill never gets heard because the Speaker of the House doesn't allow the bill to go into the public law and safety committee for even for consideration. Yeah. So we have a lot of very good program bills in the legislature sitting there collecting dust that never see the light of day. So, mm -hmm. I, you know, it's unfair for me to say all legislators are against it because they're not. There are, are a, a few that are very much for it and they understand the procedure. Yeah. But they're locked. Uh, but where they can't do anything. You know, as we talked earlier over the phone, uh, what has the liberal media has done, uh, you know, to fight against the Second Amendment and, and, and right to carry? Because we know that the, the, the liberal media, CNN, MSNBC, all the different media sources are, are a powerful entity in, in this country. You know, what have they done? And they have, have they been honest about the Second Amendment? Uh, the liberal media... Um, has deluded everybody. They've mm -hmm. lied. Mm -hmm. They would have people believe that if somebody is carrying a gun, they must be a criminal um, with no due process at all. They think that guns are handed out like candy. Guns are handed out easily. They're not. Mm -hmm. I, I can tell you right now, if you go out and buy, if, if you've never shot a pistol before and you have to go out and do the safety and accuracy test to get a carry permit in New Jersey, you're not going to pass it the first time. You, you may not even pass it the fifth time. You're really going to need to, to, to practice that and get it down. But the mm -hmm. liberal media would, would rather have you believe that carry permits are bad, guys uh, with a legal carry are bad. Um, yeah. I'm not sh sure what their exact agenda, well, their agenda is basically to get rid of the Second Amendment, I believe. Um, mm -hmm. Because the other ones fall if that one goes. Yeah, because because it, it seems to me that the liberal media is training our kids to have irrational fears of guns, especially yeah. young people. Yeah, you know, I remember you know coming up when I was a young kid and down in St. Mary's, Georgia. I, I I would go down to St. Mary's, Georgia, for the summertime, and I had a Daisy uh, gun. I had a Daisy BB gun. Now you know I would go out and shoot squirrels and and, and birds and things. You know, come home, my grandmother. Would, That's a felony here. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Wow. You know, my grandmother would you know, cook it or whatever. You know, she said if you if you kill, you got to eat it. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. And so, you know, because I had a Daisy gun, I didn't come back to New Jersey and you know school start and and, and go killing things, killing up people. You know. Um, my grandmother had a rifle. She had, in fact, she had a, 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 a rifle and a shotgun. And, you know, she was a Christian woman. She believed in God. Yes. But she also believed that, you know, if you come into this house and if, if you're trying to break in, you know, all hell, the power of Jesus' name probably, you know, <laughs> would only have to you know, save you in that house because you would get shot. My uncles in, in the South. Aunts and uncles, you know, they grew up shooting, shooting coon, you know, guns protect themselves, you know, and shooting deer and, and pigs. And so, you know, to say to them, in, you know, they should not have a gun to protect themselves and their family. And when you come up in New Jersey and, you know, as we talked over the phone, you know, there are people believing that uh, they shouldn't have, a, they believe that they think that they shouldn't have a gun because it's against the rules to have a gun. It's against the law to have a gun. That's what they've been told. That's the scenario of the media. You don't need a gun. Wait for the police officer to get there. Someone breaking in your house. Uh, Wait for the cops. Yeah. No, I, no you're, you're absolutely 100% correct. Um, I mean, I've had two break-ins here, and I was able to stop the people from coming in with a gun. One of them was about at 4 o'clock in the morning. And 
uh, the police response time was three minutes, which at four o'clock in the morning, I think was pretty good. But I'll tell you what, that was a very long three minutes. Yeah. And I, I, not, not one shot fired. I didn't shoot the guy. Nothing. He's fine. So I'm not a killer. I'm not a psycho. Uh, I didn't just shoot the guy just because he was trying to break into my house. I had no restraint. Uh, I actually was outside with the rifle on the deck, which is, is illegal in Jersey. But the mm -hmm. police didn't really seem to mind. Um, and again, like you said, yeah, uh, you come up to New Jersey with a, a, a thing as a BB gun or a um, slingshot, you're, you're a felon in New Jersey. Yeah. Slingshots are also illegal. Wow, that's that's crazy. You know, one of the things you talk about breaking in, and, and there was a story, I don't know if you heard about Philadelphia, where this grandma was in her house sleeping, and she heard a, 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 a robber break in her house, went through the window, she got the gun, and she shot at the guy, and, uh, you know, the guy jumped out the window, and I think he, he went to the... Uh, uh, he, he went to the hospital and said, listen, this woman got a gun in the house. Well, you know, she's protecting herself, and there's numerous stories like that of people all over the country, women and, and men, oh, and, you know, protecting themselves. What's wrong with New Jersey? <laughs> I, that's the million-dollar question. We, we, you know what? We, we don't even care what's wrong with New Jersey. We, we are going to hold their feet on fire with this case. We have 63 pages of evidence against them that the justifiable new statute is A, adopted illegally, B, goes against the Supreme Court ruling. The security rule is bad law. Mm -hmm. Not out bad law. We have evidence of this. Evidence of this has never been shown before. We're all basically living under in New Jersey uh, by the Drake case, which was heard in 2013, where the Third Circuit Federal Court found justifiable means constitutional. Mm -hmm. which is wrong. The Drake case almost won, but it didn't. Um, if you read Judge Hardiman's dissent in that, it's riveting with what he says. He says, there's no way the New Jersey legislature could have predicted the Heller decision. And he's absolutely right. Mm -hmm. So we are using a lot of the Heller case in our case. We're also using... Uh, Catano and versus Massachusetts, which is the recent Taser case, where it was stated that all bearable arms are of the Second Amendment mm. and should be able to be used. What's New Jersey's problem specifically? I, I've never quite been able to put my finger on it. Hmm. Tell me about the the liberal left organiza organizations. Uh, that are are fighting against this, and you know who, uh, you know the left ought to believe that they, you know, they've left they, they're uh, they're this the strong on gun control, a false promise of gun control, and uh, you know it's uh, they always say, well, we don't you don't need a gun, and you know when something goes wrong, we got to do something, you know when a school gets shot up, and we realize that when when there are school shootings, you know those people that have who go out and kill people and school shootings they're you know either they're psychopathic they're, they're crazy they they shouldn't have they have social problems they shouldn't have a gun in the first place but first thing they do is the media the left they 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 um blame the nra when yeah they blame the nra and then if, if they look in the inner cities now this is one of the strangest thing you know the, even in the inner city shooters in chicago trenton camden north Jersey City, all these gun shootings, they don't really, they don't blame too much the NRA, but they also, but in, in the real, in the sometimes, they do blame the NRA. Like the NRA actually put their hand, put the gun in the criminal's hands to go out and, and kill people. You know, what do you say about that in, in the left organizations and how people are blaming the NRA? Well, it, I mean, they're using the NRA as a scapegoat, I believe, to, 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 um, and, and they're in what, what I would say some kind of sociopathic denial. Um, mm -hmm. the, the fact of the matter is the Parkland shoot down in Florida raised all kinds of red flags, that he was a psychopath, he had mental problems, he had violence problems, like he mutilated animals and whatnot, but they didn't do a damn thing about it. The FBI dropped the ball on that. The sheriff dropped the ball on that. The police didn't move in when they should have to stop the guy. 
so that's Parkland, Florida. Um, you got the guy down in Texas who shot the people up in the church down there. Uh, that was the problem between the Navy and the mix tech not being properly communicating with this guy with a white beard and a message and a five so had a firearm. So they talk about expanded background checks. Um, I'm not really sure how they're going to expand them more, but what they need to do is enforce the laws that are on the books now. Quit blaming the NRA for everything. Yeah. That's number one. All right. That, that, the left goes off on blaming the NRA for everything because they don't quite know how to fix the real problem. Mm -hmm. I don't think they have a clue how to fix the real problem. Well, they don't want to fix the real problem. Mm -hmm. Now, when you talk about the people in the inner cities like Camden, uh, Trenton, and Newark, I mean, I'm probably 15 miles from Camden. You got a lot of good people that live in Camden, and they're afraid. And a lot of these people up in Camden and, and the surrounding area, Pensalkin, they don't think that they could even get a gun. Yeah, they yeah. They don't know how to yeah. go about it. Mm -hmm. They just live there. So in order for them to protect themselves, they might pick up one illegally to protect themselves. The next thing you know, they become a felon. But th these are law-abiding citizens who have been misled by the Democrats and the liberal left. Mm. That, oh, no, you just can't have a gun. Mm -hmm. Well, the Second yeah. Amendment doesn't see race, color, creed, sexual orientation, or anything else. The Second Amendment is for everybody. Yeah. And, and, you know, you're definitely right because, you know, when I, when I go in the inner city and speak to African Americans about the Second Amendment, about other rights, you know, they say, oh, go, Second Amendment, is just, it's for white people. You know, and those for those white people, the Second Amendment. And I say, well, if you read it, it doesn't say, it just says all people. You know, it's about, you know, protecting themselves. It doesn't say white people or Chinese people, Italians or Polish. It says we the the people. Americans. We the right. people. And so, I, you know, one of the things that uh, I remember me and uh, Mr. Harmon and, and some other ones had a conversation uh, about making sure that people are educated. You know, and that's one of the things about this RV tour that a lot of us are going on. You're welcome to come out with us, too. But we're going into the inner cities talking about the Second Amendment rights. We're going to talk about illegal immigration. We're going to talk about a lot of different things. The Constitution, Second Amendment. A lot of people, you know, um, especially in the inner cities, whether they're black, white, or Hispanic, they, they really don't know about the Constitution. It's, they, you know, they're not be, it's not being taught in school. They, you know, de definitely not the Declaration of Independence, anything about Second Amendment rights no. and all these other things. They're not being taught. As a matter of fact, they, it's, it's, it's been kept out of the schools. You know, now one of the things that, you know, like I could talk about, you know, Martin Luther King was my hero. And he always, you know, and, and, and Martin Luther King was a, a great man, but he believed in the Second Amendment. You know, people don't understand, Martin Luther King tried to get a uh, a gun license in Alabama. Oh, it's just, yeah. he, he, was denied. Denied. he was denied. He was denied. Oh, yes. But yes. you would hear the left says, oh, Martin Luther King don't believe in a gun. You know, Martin Luther King believed in nonviolence. Well, nonviolence was a tactic. You know, always talking about, well, if Martin Luther King believed in nonviolence, then why would he have the deacons of defense protecting him? That believed in the gun. They had guns. The deacons of defense, and it's a movie out. They had rifles. They had handguns. They were going with Dr. King in Alabama and Mississippi and all those other areas of Georgia protecting him. So Martin Luther King did believe in part of the Second Amendment. Sure. But, huh? Yeah, uh, definitely he did. Um, and, uh, you know, he was denied a permit also. Uh, yeah. I mean, a lot of the New Jersey firearm laws are have a very dark history uh, mm. of racism uh, that goes back to the late 60s, early 70s. Oddly enough, the Scardi rule, the justifiable need rule that we spoke about earlier was adopted during one of the worst times in New Jersey, and this was during the civil rights riots. Mm -hmm. You take a picture, so you take a look at that, all right, who were they trying to keep the guns away from? Yeah. I think the legislator panicked back then, and they've just been running with it ever since. Keep the guns out of African-Americans' hands. Right. right? Yeah. 
when we get done with our case, uh, our intentions are for everybody who is a law-abiding citizen and a fit citizen, uh, in other words, non-criminal, non-felon, whatever, mm -hmm. should be able to catch them to protect themselves outside the home in New Jersey. That, that, that is the intentions of our case. That's where we're going with it. And, and, you know, and for me, you know, I, I definitely support you. You're welcome to come on the show anytime. You know, one of the things, you know, I talk about, you know, one of the things that they talk about, especially in the South and, you know, have people from New Jersey, the liberals say, well, why do you want to carry guns in church? Why do you want to carry guns in, in, in the police? You know, I, I'm, why do anybody want to carry a gun in a, in a supermarket and in all these different places? You know, because the world is a violent, you know, we're, we're in a violent world. We're in a violent country. But also, you don't see, I told this lady, have you heard anything about an NRA member or a Second Amendment member groups and anything killing people? Committing, committing the worst types of atrocities with guns. No, you you haven't seen it. No, no. and you won't. It's just, it just bothers me that to see that the liberal left media and these organizations and these politicians say, well, you don't need a gun, you don't need to protect yourself. The NRA are violent people, and and all these other organizations are are, are violent. They, they, you know, and it, and you don't see. To me, I don't see the violence. I don't see how these how groups are violent. I don't well, see... that's because no, it doesn't yeah. exist. That, that's yeah. deflection. The, the left is deflecting your attention from something else. Yeah. But by, by they have to be by saying that. Yeah. They're deflecting your attention from the truth, and the truth is, if the law-abiding citizen or even the NRA member, let, let's just say the NRA member, if you want, mm -hmm. is not a criminal. They don't go around perpetrating crimes. They they are proud of their membership, they're proud of the heritage of the NRA, and they're proud, proud of what's going to be the future of the NRA. Mm -hmm. and yet, it's not a terrorist organization. I, I, I think it was a couple of years ago, was the first time I heard that the NRA was a terrorist organization. Yes, and, yes. Said, well, Jesus, well, you know, I, what I got, Homeland Security's going to be at my door next? Wow. Yeah. Cause, cause I'm, I'm like an eight or ten year member of the NRA. Uh, yeah. I don't consider myself a terrorist. Mm-hmm. I'm not sitting here building bombs or anything. I'm just a guy that wants to protect myself and my family outside the home. Uh, and hopefully this case gets it done. I believe it will. Uh, but the liberal, le I mean, we, we haven't, w when you talk about the left, and well, let's talk about New Jersey specifically. I like to focus on New Jersey a lot. Okay. Uh, basically because I live here. We have a group of uh, ladies, uh, moms demand action. Um, they like to come out to the hearings and they like to have meetings. And basically, they don't know what they're talking about at all when it comes to firearms. Um, they talk about the AR-15 uh, being the assault rifle 15. It holds a 30-round magazine. It shoots 115 bullets every five seconds. Uh, this is amazing. It has a grenade launcher on it. Oh, my God. Uh, guns are bad. You have to ban them all. Uh, they're wrong. Uh, another organization is Fire uh, They're along the same lines as Moms and Moms and Action. You'll see them at the hearings in Trenton. They'll come out. Um, and one of the interesting things that I saw at the last hearing in Trenton where these late six gun bills were brought up was I heard a lot of testimony from Moms Demand Action and Peace Fire consistently talk about the shooting in Florida. Those six bills that are going to be going to the Senate, I believe, on June 7th, were introduced in January. This was almost a month before the Florida shoot. Those six bills were already pre-filed and reintroduced before the Florida shoot. Mm -hmm. uh, they used the agenda of the Florida shoot to, again, dilute your mind and make you believe that these six gun bills that we're looking at here in New Jersey have to be passed because somehow it's going to magically stop a psychopath. Yeah. There isn't any one of those bills that are going to do anything for any law-abiding citizen. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and, and one of the things that I, you know, I tell people is, you know, look at London. You know, people, 
uh, psychopaths will find a way to kill. You know, yeah. and, 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 you know, uh, if you take away the guns, look at, look at uh, England. You know, they, you know, they've taken away their guns, and now you see people are stabbing people to death. Knives, you know. <laughs> So yeah, they're, they're gonna, trying to ban knives over there now. Yeah, they're going to try to ban knives. Yeah, it's 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 crazy. Now, now one of the things that you know I wanted to talk to you about is that you know what can uh, the people that are watching and who going to be watching this show because we're going to send it out. What can they do to help you out in your organizations? Well, I mean, I'll post a link to the video. Um, if they want to contribute, they can. If they want to just simply share uh, the case, they can. But what I ask people specifically to do. Mm -hmm. Most importantly, it is self-governance. Contact your legislators. Tell them you don't like what they're doing. You don't mm -hmm. agree with this gun bill. You don't agree with the fact that, that they have a bill that says that your neighbor can turn you in because you're pissed off. Mm. Um, don't let Greenwald recodify the justifiable need for statute, even though he's going to—it's it's probably going to pass. The ten-round magazine bill. Call your legislators. Call your assembly people. Tell them that's not going to do a damn thing. Mm -hmm. It's an arbitrary number. They're going to dumb it down to uh, fifteen to ten to five to two. Next, it's going to be nothing. Mm. These and I'm, I'm speaking of these six bills that are coming up in June, right around June seventh. So it's important. What I want people to do is set, it's called self governance. It's called taking control of your government. Okay. Calling your legislators, writing to your legislators, uh, telling them I don't. I do. I also, all right. Let's say Bill A one sixty five. I don't agree with it. Please vote no. That's all you have to say. Yeah, to call them. You don't have to give them eight paragraphs on why you don't like it. You don't have to tell them relate history. Just tell them vote no. This is what I would like people to do more of. It. I think if we can get to that going, um, then we might have a fighting chance. I mean, the next four years are going to be rough. Yeah, well, we got a we got a we got a crazed governor Phil Murphy. Yeah, you know, and and who is a uh, progressive, and he. A, a, a far left progressive. And, you know, you know, when you have these progressive governors, you know, they're politicians that, you know, he's a, a millionaire and he doesn't care about the common man. Matter of fact, you know, I, I the question is, if, if you want to get rid of guns and you get rid of the, the people that are protecting you, get rid of their guns. He's not going to do that. Yeah. And <laughs> he's not going to he's not going to tell the security to get rid of your guns. Get rid of their guns. So, you know, one of the things, you know, I tell that that people have to wake up, they have to think, they have to educate themselves because if 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 you don't if you're in the, if you're staying in an ignorant state, because I've been it what bothers me because I've been to the rallies, the two rallies. I've seen you spoke at I think both rallies. I was spoke at one rally, and we might there were only maybe what, hundred and fifty to two hundred people there. And we know at those rallies, you know, we know that you know there should have been thousand people at that rally you know and, and it bothers me because you know you know how do we get the people to come out because 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 one day you know possibility you're gonna wake up in the morning and you're gonna have somebody knocking on your door yeah. or yep. you're gonna read in the paper you got to give up your guns yes and then what you, you hit the nail on the head we got uh i'm going to about a 2014 number there's about 1.5 million Firearms owners in the state of New Jersey alone. Yeah, yeah. Where, where are they? Yeah, where are they? It, it's where, sad. Where, I mean, out of the three thousand that showed up, was it two thousand or three thousand that showed up at the first rally? I probably knew about three quarters of them. Mm -hmm. There should have been so many people there that uh, it should have. Well, yeah, the first rally was about. Yeah, the first rally I had. Yeah, the first rally was at about three thousand people. Had a yeah. nice number, and yeah, my fault. The first rally was a, a big rally, and the second, but you know, for some reason, though, you, if we have those many gun owners, and they're there, uh, they care about the Second Amendment, and they care about you know the, the Second Amendment, their rights. You know, they should come out. I mean, it's like, what has to do? What has the government has to do to wake these citizens up that carry a gun, or or have a gun? I, I, as a friend of mine, Mike Tominelli, um, 
who was actually in the party of six, another organization I was with a few years ago. And he said that everybody in New Jersey has Stockholm syndrome. We're all, it's almost as if we're afraid to have our rights back. Mm -hmm. And I can kind of relate to what he said. And I believe he, he's right to a certain extent. Um, I mean, I went out to Gettysburg with some friends and I was able to carry. This was my first time in my life I actually carried a firearm on my side all day. I felt like I was doing something wrong. Wow. Wow. It felt very odd to me. Mm -hmm. it was the first time in my life I was ever able to carry legally. But mm -hmm. nobody cared. I went into a store. A lady gave me an ice cream cone. Uh, we went out to a restaurant. We had dinner with a firearm on. And by around 6 o'clock at night, I finally got used to it. 7 o'clock, we were crossing the Walt Whitman Bridge back into Jersey. And I'll tell you what, I got severely depressed. I was like, man, here, here we are. I got, you know, we got to take everything off before we cross the bridge, put it all in the trunk, unload everything. Yeah, great. We're home again. So yeah. Jersey and their firearm laws suck. Yeah. I'm you know, it's insane here. And so, and one of the things that we're doing, I want to put the link out one more time. I'm going to put this link out. The, um, um, oh, here we go. Yes, this is the you know, On Fire Tour, and we're going to have different uh, individuals who support the Second Amendment. Please give. We're trying to raise a certain amount of money for this On Fire Tour so we can go out and pass out. We want to get thousands of constitutions that, uh, Declaration of Independence. We want to go out there and talk to people. We have people from all different sides. We got the Oath Keepers, the um, Lightfoot. We got people from uh, the different uh, training, uh, gun carry, gun organizations coming along. But also we got people who talk about uh, immigration and uh, the right to bear arms, uh, the uh, sanctuary cities. We got we talk about sanctuary cities. Uh, we're going to talk about education because you know one of the things is that. If we have our society, young people who are gradu who graduated from the twelfth grade but have a fourth, fifth grade reading level and math level, mm -hmm. and the media and the politicians and you know they can say certain things and do certain things and and, and, and we have a younger generation that can't comprehend, they don't quite get it, and so they can control the minds of people who are not intellectually knowledgeable. Uh, you know, and uh, about certain things. So if they're not te teaching civics in school, they're not teaching the Constitution, you know, they're not teaching uh, Declaration of Independence, you know, so we're, uh, so when they graduate from high, you know, that's not even in their thought. No, and that's a scary yeah. thought. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We're not getting any younger. Um, and we're looking at a whole, two generations that are coming up now mm -hmm. who are who are going to graduate high school and be clueless no nothing no nothing about the constitution nothing about it. no i mean i have a 20 year old daughter who she caught some pretty good social studies in fifth or sixth grade it wasn't too mm -hmm. bad i didn't agree with everything that was going on but i was glad they were teaching her something about it mm -hmm. um but still I have to redirect her way of thinking on some things sometimes. Mm -hmm. uh, because she was kind of, she kind of caught on when this whole agenda seemed to be breaking out really strong. But if I had a child in school now, I honestly, I'd be scared. Yeah. Yeah. And we'd be sitting down every night because there'd be something I would have to readjust their way of thinking on. Yeah. They don't have to agree with me, but they need to agree with the law of the land and the Constitution. Mm -hmm. Because that is where we live, that is how we live, and that's what we live by. Yeah. And, you know, one of the things is that, like, I was in Georgia for two weeks, and, and I, I sat down at a, a local a pub. And uh, it was a lounge, and they had, it was a Democrat and a Republican. There were older two, older guys that were there, and uh, they were both we were black and white. They all agreed on the Second Amendment. Down, at, yeah, they all they all agree that they have a right, and they, they give to the NRE. Democrats and Republicans down in Georgia, deep state Georgia, they have a they have a right to go hunting. They go shooting, and and, and it's a right. 
It's a, and, and and they believe and they were Christians, so they it's a God given right, a given right to protect yes. yourself and your yes. family and your property. They believe that they were you know and they were like I couldn't. They they said to the fact they couldn't live up in New Jersey. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why would I want? They said, "I love honey." You know what I mean? I love to. I want to protect myself, my family, in case someone break in. And and you know, and and the cops. It was a cop showed up, and the cop was there, and they were like, you know, hey, you know, hey, you guys are right. I'm not giving up. I'll be damned if I give up my gun, my rifle, my handgun. And so, you know, they believe, and 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 it's a, and if you go down the south especially Alabama, Georgia, Mississippi, Florida, the old southern state, Texas, in their mindset, it's a God-given right to protect themselves. That it is a God-given right to protect yourself inside and outside the home. New Jersey is still stuck in this mindset that you cannot protect yourself outside the home. Now, ironically, they will tell you that that's in the interest of public safety that you can't protect yourself outside the home, which makes no sense to me whatsoever. Mm -hmm. In the interest of public safety, that you cannot carry a firearm outside the home to protect yourself. Well, I should wait. I mean, we, we have an active shooter scenario. From, let's say the Deford Mall somewhere, all right, which is one of the local malls, and I don't have anything on me. I'm supposed to wait for mall security or the police to show up to shop, stop this madman shooting up everybody in the mall. Mm -hmm. Versus I have a sidearm, mm. and I get a good chance to take a shot and stop this guy before he kills 20 or 25 people, I'm going to do it. Yeah. But he doesn't want that. But the first thing the left will say, imagine if you shoot, if you, you miss the guy, because I've heard it, you miss the guy and then you shoot someone else. So someone else is, could be killed or shot, you know, shot or killed. That's the first thing the left will say. That's actually law in New Jersey. If you miss and shoot somebody else, you're liable for that person. If you shoot the person you're intended to shoot, you're liable for that person. Hmm. Um, if you shoot somebody in your house, you're actually liable for their hospital bills. You could be sued mm -hmm. in New Jersey. New Jersey doesn't really have a straightforward castle law doctrine where you're allowed. To, you have a duty to retreat. You're supposed to retreat into your house. Now, I've heard some people say that you need to retreat into the bathroom or the closet. Um, I don't know if that's true or not, but that's one thing I'm not going to do. I'm not going to retreat into the bathroom yeah. or the closet. If you come into my home, <laughs> we're going to have a problem. Uh, like I said, we had one, one, two break-ins, and both of them, I did not have to use the gun. I had the gun, but I didn't. Mm -hmm. People were complying. There was no reason for me to go any further than that. Mm-hmm. So it's a great responsibility, and you do need to show some restraint and safety if you do have a rifle or a, a sidearm on you. Um, and this is, mm -hmm. and the left doesn't understand that. Mm -hmm. They, they yeah. think that because we're carrying a gun, that it's like you said, it's going to be the wild, wild, wild west out there. Mm -hmm. That's not the case. That's not true. The, the New Jersey firearm owner is probably the most safest in the nation. Mm-hmm. We have to be. Yeah. Because we are under scrutiny every single day. Mm -hmm. Constant scrutiny with every mm -hmm. move we make, every gun we buy, what type of ammo we have. We can't have hollow points here. We can't have hollow points there. We can't pick up a friend on the way to the range. We can't be, we're constantly being told what we cannot do. So we are constantly practicing this crazy safety routine every day being a firearm of jersey yeah you know i'd like to introduce you to you know for those who are watching this is mark cheeseman he is part of the uh he's a member of the uh nra and he's a new jersey citizen and he's a part of the second amendment groups uh he's also a part of the constitutional republicans we're having discussion about the uh the second amendment right to carry and he has a bill in uh, he's, uh, uh, he's, matter of fact, he's suing the New Jersey, uh, 
for uh, the carry uh, the carry law. And so uh, it's very important that you know what's happening in New Jersey. And and he is a uh, he's spoken at different rallies uh, around the state and probably around the country. But it's important that you understand that you do have a, a right and uh, this, yes. you have a, a Second Amendment right. And, and, and Mark, we're about to go off, but uh, I like to say, I like to thank you. Um, thank you. Uh, for, uh, oh, man, this is, we're going to send this all over the place, and it's okay. exciting. And so is there anything that you want to say before we get off the air? Um, I want to thank uh, John Gilliard. He's the co, he's also has a uh, case filed along with me. And the cases are not merged, but he is in appeals court also. Mm-hmm. And I need to thank Jay Factor. Okay. Uh, Jay Factor is a historian here in New Jersey. He's done extensive research mm. into New Jersey and the New Jersey firearm laws. And he, he has brought to light evidence that I don't believe has ever been presented before. Um, so I need to thank those guys. Most of all, I want to thank the community that's donated to us and that's behind us on this. Mm-hmm. Um, Basically, that's about it. Uh, we do intend on winning. We're not going to back down. We're not going to give up. We're going to take this as far as we can take it. If we got to go to the Supreme Court, fine. But we, we yes. will. Yes, definitely. Uh, so uh, i like to thank you, and you're welcome to come on anytime. You know, it's, All right, it's, it's been exciting. It's been, to me, this has been one of the, the best shows ever. And uh, you. you're very knowledgeable. Uh, you know, it's it's about the Second Amendment, about the, you know, the whole Constitution, about what's happening with the gun rights in New Jersey and around the country. And I like to, you know, listen, if you ever have any issues, talk about anything, you're welcome to come on. We'll spread the message for you. And because I do believe in the Second Amendment, and I do oh, believe you. you should have the right to protect yourself and your family. All right, Dan, good luck with your uh, On Fire project and your On Fire tour. Yes. Um, I'm going to be pro- promoting that for you also. And everybody needs to donate to what Daryl's doing. Mm-hmm. Very important. Uh, that we get the word out to everybody in New Jersey. The inner state is everywhere. Everybody needs to be aware of what's going on in the state and their right to the Second Amendment. Mm-hmm. All right. Thank you, my brother. All right. Uh, Al, thank safe. you. All, All right. right. Take care. See you. Hi, this is Daryl McKell Brooks of the uh, On the Fry Show. I'd like to thank Mark Cheeseman for coming on. And please go to the uh, WW GoFundMe uh, on NJ On Fire Tour. We need your support. We have raised about 370 some dollars. We're doing a fundraiser today. We're trying to raise $500 today by tomorrow. So if you can please share this message and, and share the On Fire Tour and, and, and give, you know, we'd be grateful right here in New Jersey if you're from another part of the state or you're from uh, outside the state, please give, please give. Hey, David, thank you. Floyd, thank you. Please uh, share the message and give. And Floyd, you better be coming with us for the story. You know, you, you're a big guy. You can help protect us. You know, you can, <laughs> ain't nobody going to bother you. But please give, people. Um, if you have any interesting issues, you want to come on, just send me a uh, message on my uh, on, on Fire or Daryl McKell Brooks or on this page. Send me uh, something, and I'll, I'll bring you on. And guess what? We're going to have the uh, deplorable choirs. Yeah, they're out of New York. They're out of Texas. Three young ladies. And they sing very well. And uh, deplorable uh, choir from out of Texas. Hopefully they'll be, they be on tomorrow. But I promise you we're going to have a, a, a lot of good conversation, good shows, intelligent shows about what's really happening in our society and what's really happening in our state. We have to be um, um, educated people. We have to educate ourselves, and we have to give information. We have to educate our young people, our you know, our people that are in college, you know, our, our younger, our, our, our kids, our neighbors about what's happening. We have a governor and we have a legislative people that are progressive. They're liberal left. They have lied to the people. The liberal media has lied. MSNBC have lied. CNN has lied. They have lied about our president. They have lied about the NRA. They, lie, they have lied about individuals that who want to protect themselves, like I said. I talked about my grandmother, Mama Gracie, had a gun. Was she evil? She protected herself. She had a shotgun and she had a rifle in her house. You know, I had a a BB gun, a Daisy BB gun. Do I go out and shoot up a school or shoot individuals in a neighborhood? No. I shot birds. I shot squirrels. 
And somebody asked me, well, you know, Daryl, did you know what the squirrel tastes like? I think I, I taste the squirrel. It was okay. You know, and, um, you know, I was down in Georgia, same as Georgia. And they talked about, uh, yeah. And, 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 you know, they talked about it was black and it was white. It was Democrat. It was uh, Republican. They talked about they believed in the gun. They believed in protecting themselves. They believe in the Second Amendment. They didn't believe in getting rid of the gun. They wanted to protect themselves. They went hunting. They went out shooting, you know, turkeys and deers. And these were Democrats and Republicans who were not getting rid of their guns down in Georgia. And they um, shooting coon. My aunt went down to Georgia. She woke me up and said, I got some coon for you, coon and grits. I didn't eat the coon, but that coon was shot. I just ate the grits, but I couldn't deal with the coon. Yeah, so <laughs> coon and grits, yeah. But uh, some people say that's good eating, you know, but, you know, I, mm, you know, I can get rid of it. I don't need the coon. But I like to say I thank you all for watching the show. Remember, understand what's happening to this country. Understand what's happening to this state. Um, you can't allow the liberal left to control us. The liberals are men have a mental disorder, and it's the conservatives that will bring this country back. It's about God and country. Believe this, Americans. We have to stand up. We have to fight. We have to protest. We have to organize. And listen, Martin Luther King was my hero. I know he was some of y'all heroes. Martin Luther King believed in, in the gun. He tried to get a sec he tried to get a gun. They denied him. Alabama but he believed in Second Amendment because he had the deacons of defense protecting him. But he also uh, believed in nonviolent civil disobedience direct action. So we have to be a part of that. We have to believe it. If they try to take away your rights, and they will try because we have a governor like Phil Murphy who believe in taking away rights of, of people, that especially he doesn't believe in the Constitution, he doesn't believe in the Declaration of Independence, and we have people in our state legislature, whether they're state assembly, state senate, who know nothing about the Constitution, don't care about the Constitution, they will do everything they can to take away your rights. So stand up. If we have to protest, we have to organize nonviolent civil disobedience, direct action, we have to do what was right for us. It's about God and country. We cannot allow the enemy to take us down because the enemy will do everything they can to take away your rights and they've been doing it in new jersey they're doing it in new york city and they're doing it in certain other parts of the country and listen wake up we have to wake we love our country we love our president donald trump and the enemy's trying to take away our president and i just want to say this these same enemies that are trying to take away our president take down our president they are trying to they are will be take they're trying to take down this country because if you take down a president you take down the country, the individuals that believe in this country, the individuals that believe in this country and believe in our president, Donald Trump, okay? Because he's my president, he's your president, he's making America great again, he's making America strong again, and we have to believe that. And there's nothing wrong with Americans, America first. Because American first is, is just all Americans first. If you're here, if you're an American, a legal American, you're first. You know, and, and for some reason, Phil Murphy doesn't want that. Our governor, Phil Murphy, he doesn't believe in American first because he's given away free education. He's given away free college education to illegal immigrants, which is so wrong. Your tax dollars, New Jersey tax dollars, your tax dollars is going to illegal immigrants that are getting, will be getting free college tuition. While our own pure blooded American citizens, young people cannot pay for college. What in the hell is going on? What, what, what's happening? We have to challenge this governor. If, you know, I talk about this, you know, as I say, King was my hero. So if we have to organize, we have to shut down bridges, shut down highways, organize, you know, and, 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 and civil disobedience, massive civil disobedience, 
then we need to do this because it's 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 wrong it's wrong and just because phil murphy signed in law that doesn't mean it's right because there's a higher law there's god law god's law there's a moral law a moral law of the universe there's a, a human moral law a, a law of righteousness a, a law of truth higher than any type of phil murphy law so we need to understand that and we need to organize and never bow down you know and god and remember this i'm a christian so i'm gonna talk about christ you know martin luther king said the best true forever on the scaffold wrong forever on the throne Yet that scaffold sways the future, and behind the dim unknown stands God within the shadows, keeping watch above his own. God is in the shadows. God is with us. God will protect us. We have to stick together. We have to organize and believe that God is with us. If we have to go to jail, we go to jail. If we have to protest and, and get beat over the head by a police officers and stand up, and, but we believe, we have to believe that God is with us and God is doing and God is, is with us and we're doing the right thing by God. We have to believe that. And Phil Murphy doesn't believe that. And, and, and all these other progressive Democrats, they don't believe that. You know, and Phil Murphy is Woodrow Wilson, 10 times over. He's Roosevelt, 10 times over on steroids. So you have to stand up. You have to stand up. It's like Corzine. You got to stand up. Remember, Corzine was a one-term governor. Why was he a one-term governor? So, at the end of the day, this is the On Fire Show with your host, Darren McKell Brooks. Please support uh, the On Fire Tour. I thank you all for watching. God bless. And I'm gonna, um, we're gonna go all over the uh, inner city areas with this On Fire Tour. Please give. Please donate. And um, God bless America. God bless this state. Uh, God uh, bless you all, because it's it's all about us as a people, God and country, and uh, we must believe that. And uh, I like to thank Mark Cheeseman for coming on. He's a great a great patriot because he's doing what he believes in. He's standing up for his rights and the rights of of us as a, as Americans, as New Jerseyans. He wants to carry, uh, and we should have the right to carry. Um, it's a the political the politics of the day is corruption, is corrupt. Um, they they don't know the Constitution. They don't know that the uh, know anything about the Second Amendment, and uh, they they lack uh, any type of moral authority in in New Jersey. Uh, our politicians. So we have to stand up. We have to stand by Mark. Uh, support what he's doing, and uh, hey Mark, you keep on fighting. I am with you, and um, the people that are watching the show and will be watching. Uh, you, Mark Cheeseman, are, are with you. And we're going to keep rallying. We're going to keep organizing. We're going to keep protesting. Thank you all. I'm gonna, at the end, of the, I usually need this quote by Martin Luther King. He says this, that we're all caught up in this great inescapable networking mutuality tied in a single garment of destiny. And whatever affects one directly affects all indirectly. And that I can never be what I ought to be until you are what you ought to be. And you can never be what you ought to be unless I am what I ought to be. And then he quotes John Don, the poet, that says, No man is an island, every man is a piece of the continent, a part of the main. Then he goes on to say that any man's death diminishes me because I am involved in mankind. Therefore, never send to know whom the bell tolls, it tolls for thee. And that which we should be believe in. But the progressives, they don't believe in that. The liberals don't believe in that. But we as conservatives, people who believe in God, people who believe in God and country, we believe in this. We want to help our citizens. Okay? So, God bless. Mm. Thank you all for watching. And drink water. Water is good. <laughs> all right, God bless. See you next time. See you tomorrow. I have a very special guest. This is the On Fire Show with your host, Daryl McKell Brooks. Take care.